Salute to all the real ones out there. It's your boy Mike coming at you again with another video. Y'all like the content I've been dropping? I need you to like, comment, subscribe, and share my videos with anybody you think may benefit from them, all right? Like I said before, I'm trying to build a, a community over here where all of us can improve and get better. You know what it is. It's you know steel sharpened steel. So without further ado, uh, today's topic is going to be about ready to die, all right? Ready to die. So, I mean, the title has it all inside of it, but at this point in my life, dog, and even before, I will say, like, I have no fear of death. Now, of course, I'm not going to just be reckless. I'm not going to, you know, be on my motorcycle knowing, yo, yo, this is real fast and uh, it's getting kind of slippery. And if, you know, one rock could kill me right here if I make the wrong move. And I'm not, I'm just going to speed up faster and say, well, fuck it, I'm not afraid to die. Like, I'm not going to be like that. Let, let's go ahead and get that off the table. I'm not suicidal, but I will say like, I have no fear of death, man, you know, and I have a lot of reasons behind that. But if I just leave it just based on my experiences, being a medic, for example, when I was in Iraq and seeing people die for real, like seeing them take their last agonal breaths, agonal breaths being the last like deep breaths that your heart and lungs can provide you with since your whole body shutting down. Like just seeing that process of them being alive and then within split seconds, no longer breathing. The feeling that I got was that it's not over. It's over in this realm, but that, that energy almost is still in the room and you can feel it somewhat rising and dissipating and going somewhere else. So for me, what that let me know was this is a journey that is maybe too deep for human comprehension. And I think religion and thoughts of, let's say, the afterlife or the idea of reincarnation are all attempts to explain that process that you can feel if you see somebody die. Like another one would be, most people don't know this, but when my grandmother died, um, I was 10 years old and all everyone was at my Aunt Janet's house and we were all inside of the house and it was a very sad moment because we knew that cancer was going to take her away. And she was in my Aunt Janet's room inside the bed and everybody was basically saying she she's out of here you know she's out of here in the next couple minutes she'll be gone so I was the last one to kind of go in the room and what's crazy is the day before when everybody thought she would die from cancer is when I dropped the most tears because it was like I thought she was going to die that night so I already had a flow of, of emotion and I cried and I was basically asking everybody, why does it have to be like this? Why, why do we all have to feel so bad? Why is it like, I, I didn't, I was just trying to understand why do people have to die? If all of us are so close and it's hurting us so bad, why would it be that God still lets this person die? And in that process, I dropped so many tears that the, the day that she actually died, I felt a little bit strong knowing that it was coming, right? So when I walked into the room, she basically looked at me. She reached reached towards me, almost like trying to say, come here. And then her arm went down and she died. And that feeling that I had right there, that was my first experience with knowing that there's still energy in the room. It's, it's not what we think it is where the person's out and then up oh, that's it it's like no 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 there's a spiritual thing just because i can't see it i know that there's a spirit floating away somewhere and it just lets me know that whenever you die which is inevitable all of us gonna die all of us gonna die like that's the only guarantee you get one is that you're gonna die and two is that time's gonna go forward it never goes backwards so People can say time is an illusion, so that's not even all the way true, you know, but at the end of the day, we're all going to die. That's the only guarantee you have in life. So seeing the things that I've seen and knowing that truth, 
about everyone will eventually perish and wither away into nothingness eliminates my fear of death all right the second thing is i'm just tired of this realm i'm tired of reality society i'm, I'm just tired of it uh it kind of eliminates your desire to know more i mean like i, I have another video i'm going to make about um about like soul urges you know like things that i that that i have deep embedded in my mind about that i want to accomplish or that i want to experience in this life but away from that i gotta say it's real hard to find motivation to even want to continue living and it doesn't mean i'm depressed like don't 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 like message me after this video like dang you okay da, da. no i'm just voicing like a deep internal truth which is i'm just tired of this realm you know uh there's so much superficiality like everything's just on the surface but the minute you go deeper you're all by yourself you are totally alone the deeper you go into not only your own psyche but also into just thoughts about the nature of reality or if you're a person like me who just ponders about the things that are underneath the surface or behind the scenes you will find yourself very alone in your critique you'll look left and right and everybody else is still <laughs> like <laughs> if i take the analogy of being behind the scenes i'm backstage looking at the inner workings of all the illusions of the show meanwhile everybody else is just sitting in the front row waiting to be entertained so if i come back out from behind the scenes and try to explain to anyone about what i see back there no one's interested because all they care for is the show so that's how i feel about the superficiality of this world no one really wants to know the real truth everyone's content with how things are pre presented at face value so that's another reason why i'm just ready to die like i'm not afraid of death in that regard the second part of that is that everything is an illusion like literally all my illusions have been destroyed through not only knowledge but also deep epiphany spiritual awakenings and me just coming to a different level of consciousness where i see things almost diametrically opposed to how I saw them before. Like, give you an example of love. All right, so you guys have heard me talk about Brefault's Law often in uh, some of my prior videos, where basically the law is stated that, or the law states that women or females of all species control the dynamics of interpersonal relationships. And if a woman does not, or a female does not derive benefit from the male, then no further relationship can exist. So a woman is, like I keep saying woman because I'm bringing it back to the human side. There has to be something that she's gaining from you in order to prolong the terms of the relationship. And there also is no such thing as equity. So, for example, if you guys ever thought about like a house, right, you buy a house, then what happens is you invest into the house to make it better. And over time, the amount of value that you put into the house is represented when the price of the house goes up and that's called equity. So you're rewarded for your for your contributions to the house, even if they were years ago in the form of equity. But in relationships, there is no such thing as equity. So basically, case in point, if you're in a relationship and you think you in love, you're only in a relationship so long as the woman feels that whatever she can gain from you is benefiting her. The minute that she feels like, let's say you're not as confident as you used to be, or you're, you're not providing what she thought you should be providing, or you don't make her feel the way that she thinks you should make her feel. Like the relationship's done. And if y'all ever notice, like a woman can move on way faster than most men can. So that's like an illusion. You know, Hollywood then told you to be in love and then, you know, get down on one knee and do this and be a nice guy and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, like at, 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 the, at a moment's notice, that love can be cut. And you're only loved under the basis that you are providing something. So it's conditional. It's not unconditional. 
And then all men are typically looking for unconditional love, which the only woman that will give you that, if you're lucky, is your mom. So your whole life, you're like thirsty for this love. You have this desire that's never really truly quenched. And when you're with a woman, most people are not aware that, oh, only on the basis that I'm providing something will it work. And it doesn't matter if it's 15, 16, 20 years later. There's no equity, meaning that all the stuff you provided and gave, she could still like, it's almost like it's non-existent when it's time for her to make that cut. So everything in this realm is an illusion. And I just use love as an example, but I could go further, but I'm just limited it, limiting that point so I can go on to the next one. Another reason why I'm ready to die is because all ascension is met with resistance. There's a crab and a barrel mentality, and I mean mentally out here. And there's also rules of power that will hold you back should you be someone who's trying to ascend. So case in point, crabs in a barrel mentality would be, let's say you're a person who is now deciding, you know, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Anything that improves you. The minute you broadcast that out to anybody you care about, for the most part, you're going to be met with a little bit of resistance. And it might not be overt. It would just be mental. Whether they doubt you, whether they think, oh, yeah, yeah, let's see how long you can keep that up. Whether they bring up an example of how it didn't work for them or whether they just honestly are discouraged at the fact that you're trying to move forward. That's crab in a barrel mentality. Why can't we all rise? Why can't we all improve? Why does it always have to be that I have to feel bad because you're not comfortable with improving? That's bullshit. Or rules of power. Meaning that, like, let's say I'm a new this happened to me already. Let's say I'm a uh, new in a company and I'm coming in. I look sharp. I'm in shape. I'm trying to like learn everything I need to know. And I honestly just want to improve the company. Like I'm here. I'm at work. Why should I not work? Why should I not try to make things better around here? But you'll have people that have been there that are intimidated by the fact that you're coming in with so much gusto and that you could replace them or you could take their opportunity away for let's say promotion or recognition because you're better than them and you're you're newer so you have to deal with the rules of power you have to know how to mingle with people make them feel comfortable but still at the same time be true to yourself and try to reach your goals but you don't want to go too fast because the person who's right here will be intimidated by your progress like think about the first uh, rule of the laws of power 48 laws of power is never outshine the master so that means you can have a dumbass for our boss but you can't do anything that would make him reminded of the fact that he's a dumbass. You have to play along and make him still feel brilliant, even though it's maybe you who's behind the scenes pulling all of the uh, hard work. You're the one who's uh, completing everything to, 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 to perfection, but he's the one who gets to sit there and take all the credit for it. And as the first law of the 48 laws, you're supposed to basically play your position and never outshine the master. You see what I mean? So that it's like, all of your ascension attempts will be met with resistance. Another reason why I'm not afraid to die and I'm just ready is that the NWO is already here. The new world order is here. Most people are just unaware. So, for example, I'm not even going to go deep into that, but cashless society, that's on the way. There's going to be a point in time where you can't use cash. And most people are like, oh, yeah, well, that's easier. Then I ain't got to account change. Then I ain't got to worry about that. Then I ain't got to. Yeah, OK. But that means every transaction will be will be tracked. And can put you at a particular time and place. And they're probably going to use facial recognition. Also, there's places already in Sweden where you can go grocery shopping and you don't even need to pull out anything. As soon as you walk in, there's cameras watching what you pick. And by the time you get out that artificial intelligence will charge your phone and the money will be deducted from your bank. But what I'm saying is there's no checks and balances there. It's all technology. So what happens if you walk in, you walk out, but then your bank account is charged or your your account is shut down? You have no way of really getting that under control. Who are you going to call? What are you going to do? I mean, of course, there's some plan, there's some things in progress. Or, or, or there's some things in place that will mitigate that. But what I'm saying is there is no longer the ability for you to go into a store with cash, buy what you want and not be tracked. So you're losing some of your freedoms right there.
people don't get it. Then you have uh, countless agendas against us. And one of them, I'm even going to make a video about this, about like social engineering. There are all these things in place that are designed to make you as a man weaker and more controlled by your sexuality. And if you're a woman, then there's a lot of things that are being put into place that will deter you from actually following your biological imperative, which is to get together with a high value, uh, get together with a dude, create a family and raise those children. It's taking you away from your maternal instincts and it's trying to replace those instincts and those thoughts with the thoughts of you competing with men. So most women today are literally focused on trying to get a career, trying to do this, that, and a third. And then later on in their life, when they're like past the prime of them being able to bear healthy children, that's when they want to settle down and have a family. So there's all these agendas just going against nature. There's all these things that are trying to confuse the, uh, let's say, the dynamic between men and women. You know, you, you got this this rampant ped pedophilia and you got LGBTQ and they're adding P at the end for pedophilia. So you have all these things like just happening all at once, you know, and that's the reason why mentally I'm, I'm already kind of checked out. And I feel like if, if I died, I wouldn't. What am I really missing out on? Besides knowing that my family would be sad, I'm really ready to die, man. Like this shit is it's sickening to be aware of all the things that I'm aware of and to go about in a daily world where most people are just totally unaware that the new world order is here already. Chipping away at your, your freedoms day by day. Just David David Icke calls it the totalitarian tiptoe. Like they're just every day just making a step forward, 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 forward. And most people don't know it. And then when it's all too late, then that's when everybody's looking around like, dang, what happened? I thought, uh, I'm, I'm totally unaware. Like, when did this go into effect? It's like, dude, 10 years ago, there were people on panels. There were whistleblowers telling you about it. But it just got covered up with the latest scandal. Another reason why I'm ready to die, nothing really matters. Like in the grand scheme of things, nothing that you think about right now as an issue in your life will matter in five years. Nothing really matters. You know, you do all these things in your life to reach a certain level, to become a better person, to, if you're married, you want to be a great husband and all of that. but. Like I said earlier, with, with uh, everything being an illusion, like with love, for example, you could do all these great things. But the minute she decides, oh, I don't want to be with you anymore. It's, it's almost like you didn't do any of those things all those years. You're just a piece of crap like everybody else. So it doesn't matter. Then the illusion will continue when you go to find another girl and you think it's going to be different. And she finds another dude and she thinks it's going to be all well and great. No one's perfect. So everyone has flaws. Everything. Everybody has something wrong with them. You know, uh, just nothing really matters. Whatever you think you're doing, in the grand scheme of things, means nothing. You 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 made a million dollars, but what is money? It, it's an idea. It's not even real. If you think about it, money is not even really. It's not real. It's a piece of paper. And when I give it to you, like I give you a piece of paper that can be ripped. <laughs> you can rip it up, throw it in the trash. It means nothing. But you give me, let's say, a bottle of cologne. That bottle of cologne is real. It's right there. I can use it. It smells good. You, ah, you have like a physical sense tie to the cologne. But the money is like, it's not real. Like in, in the sense that, I mean, what is it? It's just a piece of paper. But for that piece of paper, I can get a car, a house, you know, food, anything I really need in life. So it's kind of fake. Another reason why I'm not afraid to die is that you're born alone and you're going to die alone. There's all this pressure from like society and bi biology for you to meet a woman and create a family and do this, that, and the third. And then people say, oh, yeah, you know, you, you, your legacy lives on. But it's like, yeah, but when I'm, I'm laying in my deathbed, I'm, I'm dying alone. No one's going with me. No one can save me from that inevitable fact. So, you know, th th I'm just keeping it all real. And I didn't mean for this video to go fat longer than 17 minutes, but I'm just keeping it real. Like, I'm ready to die.
I don't have no fear of death whatsoever. And uh, whenever it comes, I'm going to take it like a G. So like, comment, subscribe, holler back.